Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Zafin. I am one of the leads of the NOC of DEF CON. Thanks for being here. Um, the last time we had one of these was DC-19. Yeah, the real, so it's been a while. So throughout the year we always get like questions how we do the network here and the network keeps changing over and over like different properties and things like that. So we submitted a talk. It got accepted. We hope you guys enjoy it. So starting with the most important introductions, who are we? So I said already who I am. So we're just going to go around. I'm going to ask each one of you to say your name or handle, say what you do here at DEF CON, how many years have you been gooning uh, with the NOC or with DEF CON. Uh, if you want, you can say what you do for your day job and what do you do exactly, right? If you're in offensive security, networking, blue team, whatever. So turning over to Mac. Hey everyone, I'm Mac. I'm the number two in the NOC, uh, responsible, and this is like DEF CON 11, or sorry, 11th DEF CON for me. Uh, so I'm responsible for a lot of the core infrastructure and overall planning of the, the network. So, John? You going down the line? Yep, down the line. Do the lineup. Hi, I'm John. I'm uh, Colin's Wi Fi bitch, so <laughs> I basically do stuff for Wi Fi. Uh, this is my third year officially. And I've been a friend to the NOC uh, for a long time before that. My day job is working for the Wi Fi vendor, Aruba. And I think the reason that they asked me to be part of the NOC team is they were too cheap to pay for a support contract. And if they wanted like firmware updates, <laughs> they know that I can get that stuff. So I can think of no other reason why I'm here besides that. Hi, my name is Phil. I, uh, I work with the NOC. I am not part of the NOC. I kind of am. I'm the uh, regional infrastructure manager for Caesars Entertainment. I help them set up their network around the buildings, escort them here, escort them there, and help them put their equipment in. Thank you, Thank you. Without Phil, would be screwed. Hi, everyone. My name is Monsi. I'm the Knox Tribute. This is my third year, so all the gaff tape and running around, that's essentially what I do. Thanks. Hi, my name is Price. Um, this is my third year, but I took a couple of years off. Um, I'm a runner for the, for the NOC. In my day job, I build automation frameworks from the ground up. Hi, my name is Colin. Uh, you can find me underscore CRB on Twitter. I am the, I guess, boss of John. Uh, I'm the wireless team lead, and uh, my day job, I work for CDW as the wireless technical architect, so I've been doing wireless for you know, about 10 years now. Hi, my name's Jared. I'm an alcoholic. Welcome, <laughs> <laughs> Jared. Uh, I've been doing this for, I don't know, seven, eight years? You're Something like that? You're supposed to know. Yeah, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> um, you do wired side. Is it? Hey, I'm Nick, also um, C75. Um, this is my fifth year, and I do Wi Fi reg and other miscellaneous things. Um, my day job, I'm the um, head of security at a cryptocurrency exchange called Kraken. Um, and I also run um, Drunk Hacker History here at DEF CON. So tonight at 8 o'clock, um, Planet Hollywood mezzanine stage, join us. My name is Mike or Sparky. Um, I've been with the, the NOC for 16 years. Um, I guess that makes me the most senior one. Um, yeah, except for I'm not the boss. Uh, I run like operations, set up teams uh, for the NOC, and my day job is at point of sale applications. Hi, I'm Spencer. Uh, I do most of our monitoring and wired switch config stuff. Um, not most of that. I help with that. Uh, for my day job, I'm a re reverse engineer for Cisco Talos. Hey, uh, I'm Wish. Uh, this is my second year at Gooning. Um, I help with all the taping and wiring and stuff like that. 
Hello, I'm Topher. I just showed up to the knock this year. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm John. Uh, this is my second year at Gooning, and I just work here. Uh, I'm fifth for death. I am actually number two to Phil, so I work for the casino and do exactly what Phil does. So, yeah, this is my uh, sixth year. And uh, I'm a uh, dedication and I think I've been here for four years because I'm really good at building network cables. <laughs> <laughs> so we just want to highlight that the, the team itself has got a mix of backgrounds and skill sets and that's one of the things that we really value inside the NOC. Um, you know, going to the, anyone can be a part of the NOC, obviously there's, there's some, some requirements but, you know, NOC people can come from anywhere. So we're just like you. Sparky's from Canada. He came from. We even allow Canadians. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Grandfathered in. <laughs> All right. So that's that's about us. Um, you know, what do we do? Who do we help out? Basically, we provide the core infrastructure that all of the villages, press, contests, speakers, closed caption, DCTV routes, everyone connects to, um, and we also provide the wireless for everyone you know, any of, any of the attendees here. Um, and we've done a bunch of different things inside of each of, each of these have their own requirements, their own needs, and we try to satisfy and help out as many people as we can. Um, you want to talk? No, you go. Okay. So, a long time ago, long time ago being 11 years, so that's my memory, uh, we'd usually arrive sometime around, you know, Sunday night, get started on Monday and we'd work through the week. We've started moving that a little bit closer uh, in the last few years just because there's a lot more properties, there's a lot more people and there's a lot more going on. But it really comes down to, you know, just like you build out any of the foundations for other networks, you got to have your wired in, you, got, you have to have your core in, you have to get your wired out to all of your edges, you have to get access points hung, you have to get them, you know, pulled back, you have to connect for everyone's there. Um, and then conference starts and it becomes a whole lot of, you know, uh, last minute requests, sudden requests, issues, et cetera. Um, so this kind of leads into, we moved a little bit earlier this year, I arrived Thursday week before to get stuff going um, and it's actually been a fairly smooth year I think, although I'm totally jinxing it right now. Um, so we'll see what happens, especially after the DNS talk a half hour ago. Attaboy. Um, so that's it. I mean, there isn't a whole lot to the complexity and we'll totally go into questions in a bit and you can ask what you want about the infrastructure. Um, <laughs> thank you everyone. There you go. Thank you guys. It's, not, it's nice to be the speaker. You have people bring you stuff. It's cool. You should submit. Thank you DCTV. Thank you DCTV. Um, so that, you know, again, not a whole lot there uh, from the, the complexity of the infrastructure side uh, or the wired side. So now I'm going to talk about the wireless. Colin? John? Present. Like, yeah? Sorry, I'm You're covering up. open up here. Actually, before oh, that. Sorry, what I forget? No, no, hey, come, come up. Yeah. Come up. Part of this present, this is not a presentation. The idea is to be like you guys interacting with us and asking questions and so on and so forth. So instead of like trying to break the ice a little bit, Wi-Fi has a lot of information uh, that I think is going to sparkle some questions in your mind or things that you already want to ask us. So John and Colin, they're going to go through the wireless stuff. But in the meantime, take notes. Uh, we want to hear questions from you guys. Otherwise, we're not going to be here for the remaining 80 minutes. Sure. So as Mac and Louise mentioned, um, there's a lot of pre-con stuff that we do and specifically with the wireless, if you guys have been coming for a couple of years, you know, we've changed venues, we've expanded. Uh, we were at Caesars last year, Mine a little, a little closer, better. Um, so that's a challenge for the wireless. We're trying to put RF in different spaces. Um, usually we're going to try and do some sort of a site walkthrough if it's a totally new property, just so we can get an eye on you know, what things look like. Um, I do predictive planning using a, cool, a tool called Ekahau. So we actually take some time to see, you know, will 
this amount of APs cover where we think it will. Uh, we also have the fun sort of situation where I'd love to give you guys more access points to have more wireless. But we've got a limit on drops. There are not infinite amounts of drops. And where I want an AP doesn't mean there's going to be a network connection to feed that AP. So there's, there's compromise in some of these spaces and we got to kind of work with that as, as necessary and things change from my original plans. On top of that, I, I'll tell you guys that the, the folks that do the DEF CON planning do a great job of accommodating and moving things around but what's in what room is in flux so long up until we get here that I kind of take first shot at a design and then we know we got to change it. Um, we also stage equipment so all of our stuff gets stood up probably a month or so before the con. We make sure that we got new code on it, we look at last year's config, make any changes we need to make um, and then make sure that that also integrates into the overall design. So again, different venues the last couple of years we've had different network, network topologies which meant the wireless had to adjust slightly meaning we're not just plugging in what we had last year. Um, and then you know as Max said we, we get here a little early so that I was helping with fiber and getting APs out uh, and inventoried as early as Saturday evening when I got in. Anything else we're doing pre con? You might notice the lie that was in the previous slide. The wired network is only there to support the wireless network. That's the only reason that they put wired in. Um, these are the tools that we've been using this year. So to do what we do we don't have to have these tools but I'll tell you it makes our life a lot easier. So down at the bottom left there you've got the Akao sidekick that's uh, spectrum analysis and some Wi-Fi survey work and then a bunch of NetScout air flute tools to quickly diagnose port problems and RF issues and uh, as always there's a console cable in the mix and then uh, a special console cable for our access points. And then just a little bit about the hardware we're using. We've got Aruba 7000 series controllers. Uh, 7210 is kind of the big boy. Covers uh, the larger of the venues and then we've got a smaller 7005 covering just the Flamingo. Uh, right now we're running 6.5 code. We're using uh, AP 305s. We've got about 80 of them out this year. Uh, probably about 100 in inventory. So when we have more ports we put more out if we can. And then we're also running Aruba Airwave as a uh, management. Just a little bit about the settings. So I've seen stuff on Twitter after the con talking about you know I was on the Wi-Fi and nobody attacked me this year. Well there's a reason for that. So uh, DEF CON open is 2.4 gigahertz only. We have client isolation so that means clients can't talk to each other when they're on that network. We're blocking MDNS, bonjour traffic. Uh, basically our firewall is saying you can only go to the internet and obviously it's an open network so there is no encryption. Anything that you send over the air someone else can sniff. Our DEF CON secure on the other hand is 5 gig only. So that kind of takes a lot of the noise out of the cheap little devices from China that are really good at deauth attacks. Uh, you have to be a little bit more specific to target that network. Again, client isolation, DNS, uh, MDNS blocking, same thing with the firewall. But we are using WPA2 Enterprise with uh, PEEP MS Chat V2. And then the back end of that is free radius for our client auth. Um, and then just sort of one underlying point that I wanted to make about these kind of networks that they're very quick to come up, they're standing there for a little while the simplicity is the key in this. We don't turn on a ton of features. We want to lock down the network, we want to keep it secure but a bunch of the advanced stuff tends to cause problems with certain clients then you guys have a poor Wi-Fi experience. So we uncheck about as much as we can aside from the bare bones things that are going to keep you getting on the network quickly, getting you on the network securely and then just letting you do your thing. How many people use the secure <laughs> Wi-Fi network this year? How many people use the open Wi-Fi network this year? So I remember uh, DEF CON, I don't know which number it was, it was at the Riviera when uh, do you remember Airpone when it first came out? Basically it was on a, wi a, a an open wireless network and what it was doing was essentially everybody that downloaded a page from the internet, it would replace all of the pictures in any web page with, um, with Goatsy. And so you would see, I would just watch these guys sitting out there typing something and then all of a sudden they'd slam their laptop lid shut and it repeated all over the place. That's why we don't use the open Wi-Fi network at a hacker con. You use the secure network and things like that don't happen. <laughs> and, and I'll say I'm proud of you guys. We had like well over 2,000 people on the wireless so far this year. You'll see better stats at closing uh, and it's predominantly on the secure network. Like good job guys. I'm, I'm glad to see it. 
Oh, you got a question. He has a question. Yeah. Uh, the wireless is not. I'm sorry. Yeah. The, the, the question was are we uh, blocking DNS null queries? Correct? No, the, the wireless is not. Firewall? No. I, we have not looked at it from the wireless. What was the question? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, are we seeing a lot of instances of iodine? And I'm not familiar with it, so. Uh, Oh, got it. Yeah. So DNS tunneling out. We don't really watch for yeah, it. Yeah, we're not really watching for that. But as far as going out, we kind of don't care. Go out. Like, we're letting people go out and do what they need to do. Yeah, we get that, we get that question a lot of, uh, oh, my application's not working, my something's not working. We're blocking nothing. Anything you want to do, as long as it's going to the internet, is, is allowed on, on this network. <laughs> Uh, and hopefully most of you know about Wi-Fi Reg. It's the way that you create your credentials for the secure network. Uh, it's, there's nothing really fancy to it. It's a pretty simple web server. We've got a, a database in the back end. It goes live the week basically of the con. So we usually do some testing staging before we get out here and then once we're here we fire it up so that if you guys want to do that password user creation, you can do it on a secure network that you trust. So do it from home, do it before you get here you know, whatever. You don't have to do that off of our network. And then we've got a bunch of instructions. So lots of different client types out there. You know, how do you get your device configured appropriately to securely connect to the PEEP network? And sometimes we miss stuff. So we have got some feedback. So thank you for the, the folks that have said like, hey, I think you got a config line wrong. Um, it's usually a, a quick and fast sort of uh, change of that page. So yeah, we miss things. We appreciate you guys giving us good feedback about things that we missed so we can fix it. Um, and then just some examples of some funny new usernames. You guys get like pretty good usernames that we see coming through the wireless controller. Use fart mocker. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This year we had added some stuff. So the lovely picture you see here, um, we found out that we had to provide some Wi-Fi over in the theater area. And kind of last minute threw up some access points. So again, not an ideal scenario. If, if me putting my wireless engineer hat on, I'd want those in ceilings with directional antennas. I'd want about four times as much to cover that area. But when you have to do it in two hours, you work with what you got. Are we talking about mounting? Yeah, so actually, why don't you? I'll talk a little bit about mounting because you see in the picture here obviously that's not the way we like to mount Wi-Fi access points and we see tweets about that sometimes if you guys don't know what you're doing, you mounted the APs wrong. We do know what we're doing but we're limited by sort of what kind of um, mounting is available. So you know uh, day one here I think on Monday they wanted to put the APs on the ceiling here like as high as possibly co as they as they possibly could. Not optimal. Um, we'd like them on stands. We'd like them up above the the people, and we'd like them horizontal. And that's sometimes tough, just based on what types of uh, stands we can get and how we can. You know, the, we've used duct tape. We've used bailing wire this year. No, no kidding. Uh, bailing wire to attach um, APs. So it's just a matter of what we can get. And we got we got some of these this year. So this is sort of our ideal. Uh, unfortunately, we got them after all the APs were up in the air. This is called the Wi-Fi stand. So, like, very handy. Hopefully, you'll see these next year because they orient the AP exactly how we want, facing down. Uh, they just made it here a little bit late. So, hopefully, next year, <laughs> that's what you're going to see everywhere. Um, yeah. The, no, no, no Chrome. I mean, maybe we could, you know, bedazzle it or something. I don't know. This is a hacker <laughs> Um, so <laughs> some of the other stuff we added this year, Android app. So hopefully uh, everyone trusted that through the Google Play Store. Um, that was sort of a new experience for me. I borrowed that idea off of CCC. Um, we've had troubles in the past with Android having such a large ecosystem. It's really hard to describe how to configure that client when it's different on so many devices. So this kind of was a little bit more effort but made it a lot easier to say, we know that you have the profile, we know that you have the cert, we know that you're doing the right, right checking and it'll work on pretty much all Android devices. So um, that was hopefully something we're going to keep uh, going in the next years. We added more config instructions for Linux. I think we'd only had WPA supplicant up to date. We added some other stuff. 
Um, and then Nick and Wish, you guys want to talk about the, or Nick and John want to talk about the Chromebook profile? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so Chromebook profile is new this year. So people had been, we saw some folks complaining on Twitter that we didn't have the config for Chromebook. And so um, how many people have Chromebooks here? Oh, a handful of people. So, so thank John actually. John, stand up. Yeah, John. Woo! Yeah! For, for spending several hours wrangling with the Chromebooks um, in order to get that to work. But now it, it works. Yeah, thanks guys. That we were busy doing other Wi-Fi stuff, so they pulled the pulled up the slack on that one. Um, challenges for Wi-Fi. <laughs> there are challenges. And funny enough, like we, we think as professionals, these are not necessarily Wi-Fi challenges. That seems to be the easy part, but patching is difficult. Cable runs are difficult. Um, sometimes we ask for a cable and it's in the middle of some space that it shouldn't be there or it needs 20 feet of gaff tape. As I mentioned before that the amount of drops that we have that we can actually backhaul to the switch, not, never as many as I want. Um, PoE can be a problem sometimes. We have PoE at every one of our switches but if you've got a bad cable run or let's say you terminated something wrong on one of the PoE pairs, uh, we had John fought one of those for a good couple of hours where the AP comes up, powers, never, never gets onto our controller because one of the pairs is flipped and it's not something you'd catch unless you had a tester or you know everything looked okay. I need to complain about my <laughs> I need to complain about because I'm sure some of you saw me on opening night in the chill out room next door in Bally's trying to screw with that access point on the 50 foot pole. Uh, that thing and we had three, three or four drops like this. AP comes up, power comes on so PoE works. It can talk to the network, that works fine. It can talk back to the controller, that works fine. It sends five packets and won't talk anymore. Like the wires heat up and suddenly become non-conductive or something. That's the sort of problems we dealt with. And changing out the cabling is the only way to, to deal with that. And sometimes it's the last cable in the room. So the, wi the wireless village this year was supposed to have an access point from us. We couldn't. It was the last possible jack in the room. It went bad so we ended up moving that out in the hallway. So um, older hotels are no fun for this sort of thing. Yeah, the Wi-Fi is easy. All the other pieces are hard. Um, the, the mounting, if you guys saw the stands that we have out there, a lot of them are, are pointed down which is what we want. Um, some of them we didn't have the little bit that we got from the Encore folks to kind of give enough 90 degree angle to drop down so we do have some that are facing polarized incorrectly. You're still getting signal, it's just not ideal. So mounting is not easy. And each of the different properties has different stands. So you know this would be great if it was just a single property but we're kind of dealing with four different groups in, in some regard and that means the mounting may not be as consistent as we want it. By the way he mentioned Encore. These guys are awesome. If you are people that hold conventions, uh, the Encore folks support all the IT for, uh, for the hotel here. <laughs> They have been here uh, day and night with us, uh, hanging out in rooms, watching us plug cables in and that sort of thing. But they're just, it's, they're incredible. So um, those guys plus Caesars IT are wonderful to work with. Yeah, thanks uh, for mentioning that, John. And, and those folks have come back working for us. And Phil, how many years have you, you say you did this? Uh, I mean, I've worked for Caesars for 15 and I think I've done it. For at least seven. Yeah, so Phil's been around for seven years. So these guys, between Phil and Kevin and, and uh, Encore folks, we, we, they are part of the doc. They, they are here, they ask to come work with us every year. They, they know what we do, they know how we do it. They're invaluable to our team. Because letting a hacker con into your MDFs and IDFs, like what could possibly go wrong with that? So, <laughs> in te uh, you know, testicular fortitude. Uh, let's see, I think I've got everything. Oh, and the room changes. Like I said, things change, right? And sometimes rooms actually change during the con and you get things like this left on the floor with no access point there anymore. So, you know, we have to be a little bit dynamic in the morning or even in the evening, look, kind of look in and see what the alerting system has said. Hey, your APs are down. It's because an air wall moved. But and those, they those pictures there are from an MGM property. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to know that. 
so yeah, it's always fun. Uh, you know, we don't really get to sit back too much. There's always something going on, and we have to address it as the con goes on. You guys have done really good this year at not stealing our APs, and we appreciate that too. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that up. Um, just some miscellaneous thoughts and you know if you guys have questions this is probably about the time for the Wi-Fi questions but everybody blames the Wi-Fi and the reality is you know sometimes it is our fault but a lot of times it's DNS problems, it's DHCP problems. Um, we work really hard so that we know that our infrastructure is solid and unless you're in some area that doesn't have our APs like the casino floor you're not going to get our Wi-Fi in the casino floor. That was a complaint last night. Yeah, there yeah, was, there a, was complaint a complaint last night. So in, in the conference spaces, we are providing RF. Everywhere else, we are not yeah. providing RF. It, is, is Wookie here? I believe that was the Twitter user that reported it last night that wasn't working on the casino floor. <laughs> that was your chance to throw something. <clears throat> All right, so uh, the other thing we, we say uh, in the app had it as a default password, DEF CON, DEF CON. And we want to just assure you guys that if you're doing the correct checking in your supplicant, because of rotating keys, you're still secure using the same password. That that TLS tunnel is dynamic per per session, so you're you're safe if you've configured your end correctly, and that's always the sticky part. More about that. Is Fartface here? You downloaded 16.2 gigabytes over the Wi-Fi over the last three days. <laughs> we know what you're doing. So kudos to Fartface, I guess. <laughs> and then just some future planning. So um, we really would love to get a WPA3 network out there potentially next year. You know, there's still a lot of client proliferation that has to happen. Um, I kind of want a stable code base for the Aruba controller that will support it well so that we can offer that. Uh, and then we also want to potentially do OWE, which is there you go. Oppor opportunistic wireless encryption. So it's it's like an open SSID, no authentication, but you get encryption. So you know, try to move towards using some of these new technologies that will keep the onboarding process simple for the Wi-Fi, but keep you guys secure. And we we could have done WPA3 this year. We didn't want to just because the client situation is still in a bit of flux and. Um, that's likely to lead every time there's a new generation of kind of Wi-Fi capabilities it leads to compatibility problems and it takes a year or two for that to sort of work its way out so um, we, we kind of made the executive decision he did that we're not going to do it this year but I think next year we're going we're to try. Yeah it's, it's, it goes back to that simplicity idea. If I turn on some new advanced feature there's going to be some devices that have a hard time with it and then can't get on the network and then that's really hard to troubleshoot. So yeah and then it's our fault right? Then, then you guys come to us and say hey the wi fis broken and we say well you know you've got this client that's not behaving correctly. Um, try to avoid that at all possible uh, cost but once we get that prolifer proliferation of devices it should be uh, a little bit easier to suss those problems out if they do occur. I think that was my last slide yeah. Okay. Any other questions? So I, I, I want to notice, I, I want to like demonstrate the, or point out the gear sitting on stage was in use up until the last couple of years where it got refreshed by stuff that's only slightly less as old. Um, so one of the big hurdles right now with IPv6 is making sure that we can do it in a secure way which means router advertisement suppression which none of our gear supports right now. You know IPv6 has been out there for what, 30 years. People have been kind of really deploying it for the last you know 5 to 10 and you know it's been secured for like the last uh, I don't know probably next year. Um, <laughs> So that, that's kind of where it's sitting. Uh, the, the second thing is uh, all of that would be tunneled because none of our immediate handoffs are V6 uh, upstream. So those are kind of the two things right now. So we'll go, I'm just going to point out. More questions? More questions. You, sir. Okay. Absolutely none. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so the, f the first question is what additional privileges do we give to uh, people who put out for the call for services or put stuff on the network? Uh, re yeah. To the point, realistically, none. Uh, if anything, we give them less privilege from the standpoint of we allow people to connect to them, which is, you know, opening it up. 
uh, so the client isolation is really from like that's yeah that's yeah that's strictly wireless to wireless. But talk about VLANs. How many VLANs we have? Like each podium has a different VLAN. So okay. So yeah, I mean, from from the standpoint of, do you want to answer? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, from from the the standpoint of the the uh, wired separation, we pretty much separate as much as possible. Every drop coming out of the wall uh, gets its own VLAN network. It gets its own network. All of that is uh, layer three controlled, uh, stateful firewall in between them and it takes it from there. So it's a specific operation to open something up where the like the CFS comes into play or the villages and contests. Over there. We'll come back. Eight oh two eleven R. Question if it didn't break the crap. Oh I'm sorry. What advanced feature do we turn off that we wish that we could use. 802.11R is a great example. It would improve roaming. Uh, it breaks a lot of devices and there's some security implications there too. Um, management frame protection is another one. That was always the, hey, why aren't you turning this on? It's because most clients don't support it and then they cannot connect to the wireless. Discovery protocols. We had a conversation about turning on Passpoint this year, hotspot 2.0 type stuff where your phones would have sort of auto connected to the network without you asking them to and we decided that that would piss a lot of people off at DEF CON. <laughs> Which was kind of the point but we decided not to do that. Yeah, so we John, raise your hands, who would be pissed off? Who would be pissed off if we, yeah, so if yeah, Home Depot does it to you though. No. Yeah. <laughs> we, we're throwing, we're knocking around the idea of maybe doing a talk about that next year so that we could run it in a very limited location so if you guys came into our talk. Your phones would probably get pass pointed, but uh, not on the full infrastructure. There's a guy over there had a question. Yeah, you right there. Got your arm up. Yep. Yep. Ah. Gotcha. So there's a there's a couple diffs in uh, sorry dips in the uh, Wi-Fi user count graphs for the year over year. Uh, and the question is, well, can we explain those? No. <laughs> uh, one of the simple comments is no. I, I, I'm trying to remember sometime back. I'm pretty sure DC 16 is when that airphone thing came out that I was talking about. That yeah. Was, that might be the reason. That was when they changed the encryption on the credit cards. At Riviera DC 16 and Rio. Is there a space? Yeah, one moment please while we confer about a proper answer to give you. Uh, pretty much larger space, more APs, not necessarily. People like, pe people used to be very skeptical about connecting to the Wi Fi network at DEF CON. Used to be. Uh, people understood that it was okay to do it, right? Um, I think that's part of it, but it's not one one thing. We got year by year, we get better. Segue to the next slide. Uh, bandwidth, uh, not great, but we keep trying to improve as much as we can. But if you guys have a great experience and it's secure, right? Secure to the point that they were talking about your device, your traffic is the traffic is encrypted nobody else can connect your device to attack your device and we are not looking at the traffic that you're sending. I think that's fair game for this, right? Um, for us on the other side is availab availability, right? We don't want uh, people like we want the network up. The more this works, the more beers we have. So through from Thursday last week through Thursday this week, it's a lot of work that we do to make it work. Then we hope it doesn't break so we can kind of watch talks and things like that. One, one, of, the, one of the suggestions from our colleagues is that uh, there are alternatives to the DEF CON network, uh, particularly you know, cellular coverage and whatnot. And during some of these, some of these years there was uh, times where that was coming out and you could secure yourself easier than you could secure into you know your standard enterprise uh, wireless network. So. 
Let's go. Oh, you got a guy straight ahead here. He's kind of got his hand up. I'm not sure if he's just resting. There you go. Commit, man. No, stand up. No, 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 no. I ain't going to listen to your question. You stand up. There you go. Do we collaborate with the black hat guys like Grifter? <laughs> Sharing resources. No. I'm going to move no. my mic away. <laughs> uh, not as much. Back when DEF CON and Black Hat were a lot closer, there was a lot of, there was some shared stuff, but uh, corporate entities kind of forced that to be a lot more separate. The um, timing doesn't line up either at all. Yeah. We, we need to have our gear here and running and going the same time Black Hat is running. So. Yeah, we're, we're also not sponsored. We're not funded like Black Hat is. Yeah, this is big bar on steel. I know. All right. Okay. We'll come back to number two over here. <laughs> Stand up. Uh, stories about disaster porn. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so the, the question is, uh, given the attacks, you know, what are the attacks we've seen? What are some of the particularly notable ones? So from, from um, you, you mentioned something that's very kind of interesting. You said under a, under attacked, like like as in we're not attacked. No, no. Under is that is that is that what you're <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm not sure if you understand how alerts work, right? All of our phones here. Could. So um, a few years back, um, we uh, we ran into an issue uh, with a, a gentleman uh, that was what was he doing in there? Was was it cloning or mimicking? Don't don't spoof any of the casino networks. That's a big big yeah. big no no. Oh, we have the And uh, the, the short and skinny of it is is that. Well, we're not attacked directly, maybe. Um, we have to deal with all the shit you guys are doing on, on that network. And it doesn't necessarily stay in your nice little area sometimes. Somebody learns a new skill set and they decide they want to try to flex that out. Sorry, this is difficult to do and this. Um, and uh, sometimes, oh shit, let me just totally screwed Spence. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Ooh, that's a healthy shot. Good luck. Um, it's okay. He is actually old enough to drink, folks. Before anybody brings that up, he has been carded. Anyways, um, no, we uh, we'll, we'll go around and occasionally we have to work with uh, Caesars um, on helping mediate some of these issues. Now, internally, Mac. Um, so I mean, from the attacks internal, like. We expect some of the network to be attacked and, and we kind of set it up and let it go that way. Again, the open network, if people are trying to attack that, that's kind of the nature of what it is. It's meant to be that, that playground for people to go with. Um, then there's other things where it's like we, you know, there was a BGP hijack a few years ago. Not necessarily anything that we, you know, it affected us or, or Whatnot. But yeah, we know the network was going through, you know, the upstream network was going through another provider um, just to demonstrate it as a talk. Uh, for the most part, what we, <laughs> what we look out for are the, the speakers who have some demonstration they want to do, and those are the ones that are, that are kind of memorable. Um, lots of gateway attacks, you know, spoofing, um, you know, the traditional wireless, deauths, et cetera. Um, why don't you talk about what happened with 8.8.8.8 this year? Sorry, which one? The uh, Google DNS. Google DNS. Uh, so yeah, so to, the, to what Sparky was saying is we don't necessarily, you know, worry about a lot of the attacks that are directed against us, but if someone just happens to be doing an attack against outside, hitting up Google, hitting up, you know, uh, Microsoft hitting up any of those you know nice companies, they'll see it as attack and they'll block you know the blacklist the the DefCon egress networks. So yeah, it's like yeah, that's the nature of it. Um, Please don't do that until tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's always fun trying to like you know reach out to people we know you know someone who knows someone who knows someone can be like oh yeah they can they can allow that through. 
Um, cause sometimes it is a, you know an exploratory attack. Sometimes it's just we have a 30,000 people connecting into this network and doing a bunch of stuff and it's become the practice recently that uh, the way to test your internet is to ping 8.8.8.8, right? Yeah, after enough of that on the same network, Google's like, why are you sending me all these ICMP? So <laughs> it becomes interesting to test it. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, I, I know we've also had the uh, Wi Fi spoofing attacks. We see Wi Fi spoofing. That's the most, I think that's the most common thing we see with Wi Fi deauth attacks, and then people will try to clone the black or the, um, sorry, DEF CON uh, network or Caesars network or things like that. So we see duplicate SSIDs in the air. Um, it's it's silly. Just don't do that because we can see which room you're in if you're doing that. And if we're not drinking or otherwise occupied, we'll come and find you, which we haven't had to do that much this year. Thank and you. And if it's the Caesars stuff, Caesars will come and find you, and you don't want that. No, they come with a lot more people. Yeah, because if we, you know, because everybody likes to come out and hey, let's clone the hotel networks. You know, put up a pie, put up something, cherry pie, pecan pie. I don't care what it is. But uh, they get something rolling, think they're cute, you know, just, yeah, it's some kind of pie or someday, whatever. <laughs> I'm not hungry, shut up. We're slowly getting drunker and drunker uh, up here. So, yeah. <laughs> so what they do is, you know, they do a one letter off and they try to get everybody else to try and authenticate to it because they don't put no encryption on it. Uh, we're, 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 we're we're better than that. Uh, we, from we the, from the back row, that it, basically the explanation there was you're an effing retard. <laughs> so. If you start trying to pretend you're Caesars and wander around the floor, um, there's a probability that somebody's going to notice, yeah. and they're going to send a lot of lot of dudes who you just don't want to visit you. They yeah, come see don't, you. Don't sit like like in one of the big bathroom stalls and do this because I'll just dump water over the door <laughs> and you know it'll be cold it won't be hot water it's going to be cold you're going to probably pee yourself two or three times while you're sitting there but it's going to happen. So I'm, I'm going to regret saying this but yes please focus your attack attention on us not on Caesars. <laughs> hey you heard it here first folks. Yeah. <laughs> We're taking a bullet for Caesars. Yeah. And I'm going to amend that by saying if don't attack our wireless network, go to the wireless village and attack their network. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Next question. Uh, you no, know, on the same token, it's like, again, 802.1x, we make it as easy as we can for you to use, right? It, we don't expect you to understand 802.1x. It, it's not that complicated, but it's not that simple. If you're not a wireless networking person, that's fine. But last year, I was at Caesars going from my room to the knock, and I'm walking by the buffet if you were there, and some guy is on his laptop walking. I'm like, whoa, do you get, do you, do you get signal here? He's like, what, yeah. I'm like, from the DEF CON network? He's like, no, F no. I don't use that network. I'm like, but you're on the internet. He's like, yeah, I'm using the hotel Wi Fi. I'm like, the open one? He's like, yeah. I'm like, right on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. You have your hands up. Yep. There you go. Gotcha. It never so, yeah. How far out in advance do we do planning and design for the network? Uh, the calls of what? A week after we leave here. First call. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, on average, we do. Mm, Let's say. Well, we should be doing. Eight months. Yeah, but eight months out, we eventually pull our shit together and, and get on the phone. Um, we actually go to an amazing conference, some of us, uh, out of Chicago uh, called ThoughtCon. Uh, and oh yeah, uh, yeah, maybe you recognize Nick. Um, and we go there and a lot of us will meet up there beforehand and, uh, and do a little bit of planning. And, uh, and, and it's got an amazing VIP section. Um, <laughs> I, you know. I do the planning. You guys are there drinking. I've oh yeah, that's a, actually that's sorry. That's I've got a wireless yeah. network to run. Yeah, uh, Colin Oslo is an uh, opera over there, and uh, yeah, we we most of us just get trashed and <laughs> shout out to, shout out to Morgan and Video Man for the, yeah. the wireless. Yeah, shout out to Morgan. Now. So pretty much video tomorrow, video. all of us, all of us are going to know where DEFCON. 28 is going to be at, that's when we start planning. If it is the same thing, we kind of know what we're doing and what, did, what worked and what didn't work. If it's a new place or adding more places, then around December we start planning.
Uh, excuse me, where are you guys going? <laughs> <laughs> this stock's not good enough? We'll, we'll come back. Uh, sorry. Oh, you in the front there. Dude, come on. Ooh. We don't suck that bad. I think we just, them. We just answered lots all the questions. Activities. <laughs> lots of activities. They're right here. Hey, this what's up? This guy's already standing. No, we, we do. We got one of the guys that do the garbage dumps. He's just in there watching stuff. He can't touch nothing. Yeah, hotel order right now. Yeah, what, what's, what's covered now? Uh, I mean, to a degree, we have some monitoring telling us, you know, what is or isn't going. And, and there's a whole lot of Twitter that would tell us what is or is not going on. <laughs> so. My phone is on mute now, so I don't know. Uh, John, is it up? You have a question? I did have a question. Uh, I was. Curious, what's the go, go, go up. Set, go up. Go up. Dude, you're like 10 feet away. Come on. I hope you answer it yourself. I was just curious, what's the setup like between here and Flamingo? And right, because there's a bunch of VLANs, and maybe it's L2, maybe it's L3. Like, how do people at Flamingo talk to so servers drunk. back here? Plant. Um, <laughs> so, uh, we'll skip through some of these. Where are they? Oh, yeah, good pictures. All right. <laughs> we'll come back to those. You can ask, if you want to see those other pictures, ask questions. There we go. So, this is what the, uh, this is what the current uh, Planet Hollywood Paris Bally's connection looks like. Um, all of it is the same layer, se layer two segments. We have physical connections between all of these properties that we can extend oh gotcha. all of our VLANs to. Um, Sorry, can you point to where the flamingo is on that map? Oh. Yeah. So the flamingo is over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, it, it, Show me the deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it is a, a smaller property um, and unfortunately it is not layer two connected over there. So what we do is we basically stand up an IPsec tunnel between the two properties. We have divided route domains such that, you know, the, the Hollywood cord, Hollywood cord network um, has one set of networks and the Flamingo has another set of networks and we do a lot of uh, cross traffic allowed between those. So Wi-Fi Reg is sitting in this building for instance. Um, so someone over in Flamingo signing up would, you know, come up to the firewall, hop across the IPsec tunnel and then drop down into our Wi-Fi reg. Um, so yeah. Other questions? <laughs> well, what would you want to know about the other images? <laughs> All right. Oh, we got a guy. Stand up, stand up. <coughs> oh, 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 wow. What well, the thank you for oh. asking. Oh. Someone, uh, who would like you to talk to about the floor? Ah, so the question was what do, uh, you know, we never have a problem. We talked about the, the infrastructure uh, and like how many lines go to particular places and then once you get to that place, you have to plug into the wall somewhere. So we have a bunch of pictures of what it's like to plug into the wall at some of these properties or the floor. So, sorry. Before we do this, um, we, we would like to say we actually really like Caesars and we enjoy their company. Yeah, it's, it really is a stuff builds over time and, and these are the oh, way properties become. Everyone's like this, right? Phil, is that enough of a backtrack? So yeah. <laughs> All right, Nick, I think. You so some of us have to go around and, and test um, drops all over the different properties. And I took this photo. Um, that's a quesadilla <laughs> down in there. And this was in Planet Hollywood um, in the celebrity um, ballrooms. But Nick, and what would you eat a quesadilla with? And then I went to the next one and there was a fork <laughs> in the floor pocket. And we've, we've, over the years we've found also things like um, shoes, um, underpants, um, random pills, and candy from God knows when. It's the real DEF CON scavenger hunt. Candy. <laughs> Step one is collect <laughs> underpants. All right. I Other questions? Pads, but you still have the <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. So the question is how do we secure the physical aspect of, of all of our networking gear? Duct tape. 
Dog, yeah. dog tape. Uh, dog most tape. of us are viciously, yeah, viciously asshole-ishness. <laughs> Bazooka bubblegum. We try to keep it away from you guys <laughs> as much as we can, right? The distribution switches, core switches, it's everything like and within like unreachable places even to us. We have to be with Encore or the hotel to be there. But access points and everything else, Sorry. it's a crapshoot, right? It depends on the property that we were at. Alexis Park was fun. Uh, Riviera was much easier because they had no wall jacks at all. So the picture that we saw around uh, here, the background picture is a wireless controller that provides power over Ethernet. It's right there. Yeah, well, right there for them, right? Um, to all the APs that we had. So the APs were in the ceiling, that's what he complained about because the APs were too high, but hey, nobody's going to steal them or unplug them and try to do something bad. Yep. And other places like the Rio, that if you were there, the, the hallway that it would lead all the way to the back there, everything like was reachable, right? So how can we secure that? Some of them would do like port secure, I guess. Some of them like we can't, right? And good or bad, we're still sort of humans and we do misconfigurations and things like that. So it happened before, one of the whoops moments is like people are like, oh, we had to. It's like, cool, what did you do? Oh, I plugged and I saw all of your access points. It's like, fair enough, right? Because we have a VLAN for all of the access points and the port that we told you guys to use instead of going to the internet was seeing all the access points. Sure, you could DDoS and bring down all of the APs, but fair, fair game, I guess. Yeah, and while you're sitting there unplugging the AP and plugging your own shit in, we're watching that through the monitoring on either Libra NMS or um, Airwave, anyways. So we know what's going on. Yeah, you tell him, Spencer. Yeah. <laughs> your leakness will only last so long. Worst balls, man. If, if you if you do want to hack Wi-Fi gear, my company Most has a very good bug bounty program. Trashed. So please do that, but not here. <laughs> All right. So we got uh, seven minutes left. No. Uh, we're, we're like no. We have thirty-seven <laughs> minutes left. <laughs> um, seven. We, we have Thank seven. you to to DCTV. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. DC. Right. Stand up, uh, DC. Nothing but love for DCTV. Um, Stand but, up. But there are other DC. departments at this conference, <laughs> just, just putting that out there. Um, and yeah, stand up, give them a round of applause over there. Here we go. Uh, yeah, 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 it's enough, that's enough. Um, <laughs> there are other departments, you know, I'm looking at SOC, uh, Speaker Ops, there's like, you know, a few other ones, just saying. Ouch. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Okay, so we'll say one last question. Who wants to go out on a good one? If you're holding your hand up. Yeah, you have a purpose. <laughs> All right, what are the legends that we passed down through the NOC team? Cover the grill. Uncle Sparky, can you tell us a story? <laughs> uh, I'm going to probably uh, pass this on to others just because uh, <laughs> at Drunk Hacker History uh, is where you come to get all of the amazing historical stories. There you go. Uh, no, uh, some of the, the uh, history, some of the past, um, things have changed dramatically um, since we started this little party. Um, back in the day we used, you know, uh, crappy D-links and um, we used to race the scissor lifts. This is like well before uh, safety and unions. Um, uh, no, no, it was pretty, pretty, pretty well back there. Um, we uh, uh, plug the switches. What switches? What? No, no, no. Oh, the switches to give away. Oh, yeah. Come on. Like we're two thirds. Two thirds of us are trashed, and I'm on that part of that. Um, no. Uh, some of the history. Um, some of the things we used to do in the past is. Um, we, the bathroom IDF, there you go. Um, somebody asked about physical security. Well, it was locked in the shitter. So um, it really, uh, do you have a picture of that? There's a picture. Yeah. 
<laughs> so uh, I, oh, just oh. before we go there, I just want to say... Sorry, so, I'm skipping ahead. <laughs> well, no, I'm just like DC-17 uh, wired did a, a spread on us and there were a lot of things like even some of these switches show up in, in the wired spread. But one of the things that they really wanted to point out over at the Riviera was an IDF. <laughs> Yeah. 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 You can um, see. It makes working those long hours a little bit more comfortable. Right over here. <laughs> yeah. yep. Sorry. Sorry. Um, back in the day, uh, all the, the tape that would be gaffed down, um, I would just drink a bottle because uh, it works really good in a gaff roll. So you can just hold on to it and roll it out. Yeah, that's why you were drinking the bottle. Yeah, well, that was it, yeah. Um, that also made for a lot of wavy lines. So uh, it's nice that we have professionals that do this now. Uh, as opposed to us. Okay. You right. guys laugh about that toilet. It's probably the cleanest one on the whole property that you know, <laughs> Sparky had access to and you didn't. Yeah. You got anything else? Yep. Oh. Five minutes. No, all right. Well, so that's it. We're gonna do. We're gonna give away history here. So um, before we do that, I just want to say thank you for coming to the talk. Thank you for being a part of DEF CON and using the network. Um, we do this for you and it is, it does feel really good to see it in use and see what's going on, even with all the challenges. <laughs> hey, and before you guys leave, some of these switches were in Wired Magazine, so, you know, yeah. they're famous switches. Yeah, centerfold. <laughs> these are like, these centerfold are centerfold spread. style switches. So, yeah. before you storm up to the stage, raise your hand if you want to switch. Yeah. Too bad. All right. No, Should no, have no, asked no, a question. No, no. Oh wait, wait. Sorry. One, one so question from now. Phil. If he, if you want a definite switch, is anybody? Did anybody travel here from Russia? <laughs> anybody here from Russia? So we got nobody working the elections. Okay. You from Russia? Did you do anything with the elections? Put your hand down if you did nothing. <laughs> okay, you don't get a switch. <laughs> All right, your turn. All right, sorry. Raise your hand again if you want to switch and you're not from uh, what Phil established here. All right. Uh, keep your hand up if you are a student. Wow. All right, you guys are awesome. Come on up to the stage. Wow. Wow. All right, that's it. Cool. Thank you, DEF CON. Thank you.